Climate change is already a reality, affecting ecosystems, the economy and our well-being and quality of life. Globally, temperatures are rising and extreme weather events such as heat waves, flooding and droughts are happening more often and becoming more severe. Climate records are being broken year after year. Climate change is impacting nature. Local plants and animals struggle adapting to changes in weather patterns. Non-local species are spreading to new areas, some bringing new diseases affecting crops, animals and humans. Different regions will be impacted in different ways. Climate change is also impacting the global economy. Changes to food production, trade and access to key resources like water and fertile land can increase geopolitical risks also for Europe. No matter where we live in the world, we are all vulnerable to the effects of climate change. The impacts of climate change will depend on how effective our efforts are today and in the future. We need to drastically reduce the amount of greenhouse gases we release and, at the same time, prepare for a changing climate. Sharing knowledge is essential for climate change efforts. A greater understanding of how each region will be affected and what can be done to prepare for adverse effects can help us better face the challenges to come. In facing the impacts of climate change, inaction is simply not an option. We must develop a climate resilient society through a combination of low carbon technologies, resilient infrastructure, improved disaster preparedness and other adaptation solutions. For example, using parks, ponds and rivers in cities to absorb excess rainwater and to cool cities. All of which also helps improve our quality of life. Our environment and ultimately our well-being depend on what we do now.
Wah. Dan buat sampah untuk sembarangan. Iya, Mas. Sepurane. Sebagai wilayah kumuh dan rawan kejahatan, kampung ini punya keunikan tersendiri, yaitu tembok-tembok rumahnya berwarna-warni. Namun, tahu nggak sih kalau Indonesia juga punya kawasan unik seperti itu? Tepatnya di pinggiran Kali Code, RT 01 RW 01 Code Utara, Kota Baru, Yogyakarta. Di sini nih hampir semua bangunannya full color. Ada warna merah, kuning, putih, dan biru. Mata jadi seger deh pokoknya ngelihatnya. Karena berwarna-warni, kampung Code sekarang sering disebut kampung warna-warni. Coba bandingkan dengan wajah kampung ini sebelum direnovasi. Wih, beda jauh. 
Awalnya kampung Cone hanya dihiasi dengan mural, yakni gambar-gambar atau lukisan dan tulisan di tembok sekeliling kampung. Di tahun 2015 ini kampung Cone menjadi lebih unik lagi karena setiap warga mengecat rumah mereka dengan aneka warna. Hanya tembok ataupun diwarnai. Uhuh, uniknya. Ada warga yang suka rela mengecat berbagai fasilitas di kampung ini. Katanya, biar cat yang sudah mulai luntur akan kembali cetar membahana. Hehehe, maklum, bila musim banjir kampung ini kerap terkena banjir. Belum lagi terkena matahari. Warga kami itu sudah terbiasa dari awal itu kita terbiasa bikin mural di kampung itu. Terus, tapi tidak keseluruhan seperti yang sekarang ini. Kemudian Tiba-tiba ada penawaran dari seseorang yang ingin membuat kampung kita itu lebih indah. Kemudian kita musyawarahkan ke warga, ternyata disetujui oleh warga dan kita selanjutnya membuat MOU disetujui oleh pihak uh, yang akan membiayai. Ya, akhirnya kita dibiayai untuk membuat kampung yang warna-warni kayak gini. Ini. ratus jiwa. Anak-anak di sini juga rajin membersihkan sampah di sekitar kampung mereka loh. Hebat ya. Nah, kalau para pemudanya juga nggak kalah kreatif. Selain membuat mural, mereka juga pintar membuat sablon tradisional atau yang biasa disebut dengan mencukil. Caranya Kukil atau toreh kayu papan keras sesuai dengan kata-kata yang mau ditulis. Lalu tambahkan warna sesuai selera dengan menggunakan tinta grafis. Setelah itu tempelkan sablon cukil pada kaos. Kemudian injak-injak sampai sablon menempel pada kaos. Terakhir jemur kaos di bawah sinar matahari selama kurang lebih dua hari. Ulala, unik ya keluarga Indonesia. Hehehe. Salut ya dengan daya kreativitas warga kampung ini. Air Sungai Ciliwung mengalami kenaikan di sekitar kawasan Rawajati, Jakarta Selatan. Beberapa jalan yang ada di sepanjang bantaran kali mulai terendam akibat air Sungai Ciliwung yang meluap. Anda bisa melihat beberapa ruas jalan di sekitar atau di bantaran Sungai Ciliwung di kawasan Rawajati sudah mulai tergenang air. Bahkan sudah masuk ke wilayah permukiman warga. Masih dari pantauan udara, ini adalah permukiman warga yang lokasinya berdekatan dengan bantaran sungai Ciliwung, mulai terendam banjir. 
Titik banjir di Rawajati terletak di wilayah RW7 dengan ketinggian air bervariasi mulai dari 30 hingga 60 cm. Ini adalah lokasi di Rawajati di mana permukiman letaknya sangat berdekatan dengan bantaran kali sungai atau bantaran kali Ciliwung. Dan kali Ciliwung ini saudara meluap akibat air kiriman dari bendung Katulampa yang mulai dibuka sejak siang tadi. Sore ini lebih dari 9 titik di Jakarta waspada banjir pasca meningkatnya ketinggian air di Bendung Katulampa Bogor, Jawa Barat. Derasnya air di Sungai Ciliwung membuat satu unit rumah di kawasan Babakan Pasar Bogor, Jawa Barat roboh. Detik-detik ini adalah saat rumah di kawasan Bogor, Jawa Barat roboh. Bagian bawah rumah yang tembok, bagian belakangnya bolong, tergerus derasnya air, saudara. Sebelumnya, Badan Nasional Penanggulangan Bencana BNPB sudah mengeluarkan peringatan waspada banjir. Salah satunya untuk warga di babakan pasar Bogor, Jawa Barat.
carved out of bedrock far underground. The deep tunnels have played a major role in improving our rivers and quality of life in the Milwaukee area. The tunnels have prevented more than 100 billion gallons of pollution from getting into Lake Michigan when strong storms rain down. Storm water and wastewater from homes and businesses fill this big bathtub where the water is stored until MMSD's two treatment facilities can clean it. The plants can each process about 300 million gallons a day. The deep tunnel can store 521 million gallons. Since it started operating in 1994, it's drastically reduced sewer overflows from 50 to 60 a year, down to an average of 2.4 annually. Thanks to the tunnel, MMSD's captured and cleaned 98% of all the water that's entered the regional sewer system since 1994. The goal for cities with sewers like ours is to capture and clean 85% many do not. The water you use in your home washes down the sewer pipe you own called a lateral. It goes out to the street into a sewer owned by your city or village. Deeper in the ground, flows travel to the regional sewers owned by MMSD that transport the water to one of two treatment facilities for the 28 communities we serve. Heavy rain in a short amount of time can challenge any sewer system. The volume of water can be staggering. One inch of rain on MMSD's service area equals 7 billion gallons of water. When we get that much rain or more, the deep tunnel helps us reduce the risk of basement backup, sewer overflows, and water pollution, ultimately helping protect Lake Michigan. In the low-lying suburbs of Tokyo, an underground pump station protects the capital from flooding. Japan's land ministry says it is the world's current largest solution to flooding. Here is the pump station for the Tokyo Metropolitan Floodway, the endpoint of a 3.7 miles long network of tunnels, capable of channeling away storm waters at the rate of five Olympic-sized swimming pools every minute. The aim is to prevent scenes like those in New York this week when Hurricane Sandy caused widespread flooding across parts of the city. A study of several towns in Tokyo's low-lying northern suburbs before and after the water system was completed in 2006 shows positive results. The floodway is directly protecting people from floods. The results are there. The damage is down by about two-thirds in terms of both the number of homes that get flooded and the areas that are impacted. The jewel of the system is a cavernous surge tank measuring 580 feet long, 256 feet wide, and 59 feet high. As smaller rivers rise during typhoons, the water is diversed into the tank through 3.9 miles of tunnels at a maximum rate of 260 cubic yards every second. From there, the water is slowly pumped into the Edo River, a waterway large enough to handle the extra volume. With a price tag of about $2.9 billion, the system wasn't cheap. But Koreyama says the United States should keep it in mind if there's space. The best idea for town planning is of course to make sure your river routes are in the right place and on the right ground. But for areas that haven't been able to do that well, new underground floodways will work well to stop flooding. But in the case of New York, all the space underground has been used up for development and I think it would probably be difficult to put in floodways. Every year, Tokyo is swept by typhoons and storms, many similar in force to Hurricane Sandy. In 1991, a typhoon swamped nearly 24,710 acres of land and flooded more than 30,000 homes in low-lying areas around Tokyo's northern fringes, according to land ministry figures. Construction of the floodway began two years later and was fully completed by 2006. This 
reservoir is about 300 feet deep. It's about a half mile long and a quarter mile wide. And if it were filled to maximum capacity, it would hold 7.9 billion gallons of stormwater and wastewater. The top of that dam over there is the same elevation as the Chicago River downtown. So the maximum fill elevation of this reservoir is five feet below the top of that dam. I'm not aware of any place else in the world where a city has connected their deep tunnel system to a reservoir of this scope and volume. We're going to take a walk inside the 30-foot diameter tunnel that connects to our Calumet sewage treatment plant, water reclamation plant. Imagine yourself inside of a, a garden hose that's as big in diameter as your house. It's a work environment that's very different than anything you'll encounter any place else. The crews working down here is a different breed of guys. You know what I mean? They work together. And then from there we're gonna be bringing the gates down. Everybody's known each other. The average guy down here, we've actually worked two or three jobs together. So it's like a little family atmosphere. I've been doing it for years. I love it. Okay, right now what we have here, when we blasted, after you blast, when we finished up, we shock treated. This is actually the plug. So this is actually the end of our tunnel that we'll be tying into a live tunnel. Right now there's another live tunnel on the other side of us that goes to the district's pumping station and there's miles and miles of tunnel underneath there on the other side. Years ago uh, when I started on this they were talking about like 28 species of fish that return to the river. It's helping to clean up, it's just taking time. I've been involved in pollution control and flood control projects in the south suburbs for more than a decade. This is really the culmination of a whole series of projects that will provide tremendous benefits once it comes online. And so to be just to be a part of that process and to see it all the way pretty much to the end is, is really important for me. SMART adalah akronim dari Storm Water Management dan Tunnel, sebuah proyek di bawah pemerintah federal yang diinisiasi untuk mengatasi masalah banjir di pusat kota Kuala Lumpur. Studi menunjukkan bahwa bentangan kritis Sungai Klang antara pertemuan SG Klang, SG Ampang dan pertemuan SG Gomba, SG Klang menjadi daerah rawan banjir dan fakta bahwa sungai tersebut semakin dibatasi oleh jembatan Jalan Tun Perak dekat Masjid Zamek yang rendah. Mengakibatkan daerah sekitarnya mengalami banjir, sistem smart akan dapat mengalihkan volume air banjir yang besar agar tidak memasuki peregangan kritis ini melalui kolam penahan. Terowongan bypass dan waduk penyimpanan, ini akan mengurangi tingkat air banjir di jembatan Jalan Tun Perak, mencegah tumpahan, namun, pada tahap desain smart. Imagine enduring round-the-clock tunneling at 30 meters below KL City in the sweltering heat of 45 degrees for three strenuous years, traversing beneath live traffic, urban infrastructure, building foundations, and underground water tables. It was every engineer's nightmare, but we accomplished the impossible. This is a story about smart.
In 2003, MMC Corporation Burhad and Gamuda Burhad, two of the nation's biggest infrastructure groups, came together to find a solution for the seasonal monsoon floods that have severely affected our capital city, Kuala Lumpur. It was a radical idea in the making. They could build a stormwater channel. But what if the channel could work as a motorway as well? Would they solve the severe traffic congestion in KL2? Yes, they would design the first dual-purpose tunnel in the world. It would be an engineering feat to build a tunnel that has both a stormwater channel and a double-decked highway deep into KL's unpredictable caustic limestone. Specially designed tunnel boring machines from Germany, Tua and Gamila, were used during the construction of SMART. It was a highly demanding and complex project. Through sheer determination and efficient project management skills, SMART was delivered on schedule. After four and a half years of construction, SMART was ready. Before SMART, Klang Valley suffered an average flood damage of 100 million ringgit annually. As of 2010, SMART has saved the KL Central Business District from flooding 91 times, sparing millions of residents and commuters in Kuala Lumpur from massive traffic jams and disastrous damage to their lives and properties. Today, SMART is used as a faster alternative to the Golden Triangle. What started as a single-purpose tunneling project became one that is fully utilized during both wet and dry seasons, proving that there is optimized value to SMART. Meanwhile, human capital and development in Malaysia has been deeply enriched by SMART. From tunneling competency to technical knowledge, SMART has conceived more than 200 engineers who are able to take on any tunneling project, locally and abroad. This equips them with valuable experience from being part of a groundbreaking project that made Malaysia proud. SMART, a project that has improved the quality of life for millions of Malaysians and made a significant contribution to the nation. Thanks to innovative ingenuity and creativity, the team braved the impossible. Today, I'm going to talk about how the smart tunnel works. Firstly, the stormwater management and road tunnel is the first combined storm and traffic tunnel in the world. They are located at Kuala Lumpur, the capital city of Malaysia. The smart tunnel consists of three sections. The upper two sections are roadways that gather the traffic and each section allow the traffic to travel in one direction only. The third section is a stormwater tunnel. Under the normal condition, the mode 1 is activated, the traffic tunnel is open, and the stormwater tunnel is closed. The tunnel will operate as a normal traffic tunnel, and no flood water is diverted into the stormwater tunnel. During the moderate storm, the mode 2 is activated, the stormwater is diverted into the stormwater tunnel. Meanwhile, the two upper roadways are still operate as usual. When the heavy storm strikes the city, the mod 3 will activate it. The upper two roadways are closed to traffic after evacuated. Trust, the entire tree section of the, of the smart tunnel is ready to carry flood water. The automated water tight gate will be opened to allow flood water to pass through. After the flood has ended, the tunnel is verified and cleaned via pressure washing and the roadway will be reopened to traffic within 48 hours of closure. 
To conclude, the success of Smart Tunnel Project successfully reduced the traffic jam and solved the problem of flash flood in Kuala Lumpur. The lesson learned in the project is innovation makes our life easier.